we've gone virtual, so we're no longer having like catered meals at UCSF um, right now, but we want to thank Canopy because they're providing the Zoom room tonight and then they provide the resources for reaching out to speakers and volunteers. So thank you, Canopy. And with that, I will let Danny take it away. <clears throat> okay, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen here. I'm just going to... Um, okay. Let's... Okay. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Okay. And uh, let me just go into present mode here. All right. Well, today I'm going to cover getting started with Layout Builder, uh, SF Doug. And um, I, I just want to really thank everybody for coming out. Um, uh, I did want to acknowledge Ann Stefanik uh, at Canopy. She's the owner and CEO, and she's just been so inspiring, and she's incredible to work with on a daily basis. Uh, she really brings out the best in all of us, and and I really, really appreciative of that. Um, uh, the irony isn't lost on me that I can attend SF Doug now because it's virtual, because I live in San Diego, so that's... That's just amazing for me. Um, I also want to thank Ann Bonham, uh, who brought who brought the idea of using Layout Builder to Canopy a while back. So if it weren't for Ann Bonham, uh, I'm really thankful for her. And also, of course, Amy June. You know, I really want to thank Amy June for uh, getting me help helping me get involved in this. So I'm a dream, I'm a senior Drupal support engineer at Canopy. Uh, I've been a web developer for the last 24 years, so I'm going into my 25th year of web development. Uh, so I was I was uh, pretty much in there pretty early on in 1996. From the that was my first web job in in 96. Uh, so um, on social media, I'm Danny underscore Englander, and my blog, my Drupal blog, is DannyEnglander.com. And I've been blogging about Drupal for about 10 years now. So it started out as a D6 site, Drupal 6, then it was D7. And actually now I've got it running on Jekyll. Um, and also I, I just want to uh, acknowledge Black Lives Matter. It's something that's really important to me and along with Canopy. And uh, I just wanted to uh, acknowledge that. Um, okay, so what will we will cover today? Uh, what is Layout Builder? Uh, what versions of Drupal does it work with? Who is it for? Anatomy of a Layout Builder page. This almost sounds like Jeopardy categories. Um, is Layout Builder extendable? Uh, what about paragraphs and panels? Uh, building with Layout Builder, theming with Layout Builder, and a li I'll, I'll do a little live demo at the end. So what is Layout Builder? So Layout Builder is an updated paradigm for structured content. Uh, and it's also a layout tool. Um, so it allows content editors and site builders to easily and quickly create visual layouts for displaying content, uh, part of Drupal core. Um, and I just wanted to define structured content. So structured content is the idea that you have little widgets uh, in little areas that content editors can rearrange within a framework, so to speak. So in other words, it's sort of the opposite of, of just dumping everything into one big WYSIWYG. So you have these, the notion of components uh, that can be reordered and, and uh, different ones can be added on different pages. Um, so content editors can customize how content is arranged on a single page or across content types. Uh, you can place and order various kinds of content in Layout Builder, blocks, fields, views, user info, taxonomy terms, and more. Um, it's great for creating custom landing pages, and I'll show you that in the demo that I do. 
Um, it's an easy to use drag and drop visual interface. Um, it's structured modular content similar to paragraphs and panels, but you get that extra added visual preview in the layout builder UI. And I'll show that to you as well. Um, leverage custom view modes on a per layout builder item basis. So what I've been finding is uh, view modes come in really handy when, when using layout builder. And for those, if, for those who might not be familiar with a view mode, uh, view mode is sort of a sub item of display modes in Drupal 8. It was, an, it was a new initiative. We had, we had view modes in Drupal 7, but you had to either add a contrib module or write your own code. So now you can quickly create a new view mode. And, and it's, what it does is it defines a special way of, def, of displaying content based on the view mode. Um, so in the display modes in Drupal, there's also form modes. So you have form modes and view modes, which are part of the display modes. And you can create a view mode for any kind of thing pretty much in Drupal. Um, so layout builder might also be great for content teams. Uh, and you can use it for all kinds of entities. And again, I'll define something here. Uh, an entity in Drupal is a, think of it as a type of a thing. So for example, you have content types, you have media types, you have users, you have taxonomy, vocabularies. So basically those things are all entities. Uh, even I believe even in, in Drupal 8 comments are entities now too. Um, so, and, and the other cool thing about Layout Builder is you can set it on the, on the entity type, but you can also override per entity. And I will show you that as well. Uh, so anatomy of a Layout Builder page. Um, okay, so when you go to manage the display, for a content type, for example, you normally, you know, you drag and drop fields around. Uh, however, for, for layout builder, what you would do is you would enable that with this checkbox. And then what happens is layout builder then takes over the display for that view mode for the content type, or if you will, another entity type, let's say media, you could do it, you could totally do it for media entities or anything you like, really. Um, and then this other checkbox down here, allow each content item to have its layout customized. So basically that enables overrides per entity item. So if you have a, a node, which is, which is a content item, you could theoretically use your own layout builder layout just on that node using you know, what's inherited from, from the main uh, content type setup. And you can also see here, I have this restrict restriction. That's from a contrib module called layout builder restrictions. And, and it's a great thing to use. Let's, beca because when you're in the layout builder interface, it can be overwhelming what, you know, the volume of blocks and lists and entities that you can choose from. So the beauty of the beauty of uh, layout builder restrictions is that you can you can limit per entity or per block or whatever you like. And you can also limit what layouts get used. Okay, now this is the next page. So so when we come to the content type display UI, you would click on manage layout. And then it comes to this page, which is the layout builder, you know, preview slash UI. And you can see here I have show content preview. And these are the action buttons. So you can save, discard. And actually in Drupal 9, I noticed there's a new button that showed up here called reorder. Uh, so I'm not sure when that happened, but it's kind of nice. Um, 
So for two, this item two here, this is where you would add a new section that contains blocks. So everything is sections and blocks. That's the paradigm here. So you would have a section that, click, that contains blocks. Uh, so when you initially create a section, you have some choices of possible layouts here. You could have a whole bunch if you wanted. Um, this two column bricks, I actually defined that one uh, based on something that was in core, uh, but it somehow, it no longer shows up at, as in a default instance of layout builder, but I just grabbed the code and defined my own and I'll show you that. Um, and so here's the block. So you can add a block and uh, that's where you add. So for example, um, this, this hero down here is, is a block within a section. And now this is when I'm configuring an individual block and in layout builder. So you can see there's a lot of lot going on here. You have, you have hero and you can choose whether or not to display the title. You can choose what to do with the label. You have your formatter and usually the formatter will most often be rendered entity, which essentially, you know, displays that entire entity for a given view mode. So for example, I have the view mode set as default, but I could just as easily set it to something else. And then that rendered entity would display based on what's set in that view mode. And the style here, this is, this is for layout builder styles, the contrib module. And I'll talk a little more about that. But basically what it is, is you can define pre-configured HTML styles for the sections and a block and the blocks. And you can have your content editors choose from these classes. Uh, so it's quite powerful. And we've been using this, this method a lot lately in some of our builds. Um, okay, so what versions of Drupal does Layout Builder work with? Well, it started in Drupal 8.6 as experimental. And if you're not familiar with the, the notion of an experimental module in Drupal, uh, it's a new initiative that started in Drupal 8.x. And basically what it does is it, it inserts a new module uh, that maybe isn't totally finished yet and it gives people a chance to test it out. And then it's decided if it will become, you know, a regular part of Drupal core. Um, and there's usually a warning like, you know, be careful with this, um, it's experimental. So by Drupal 8.8 .8 and up, which would really just be Drupal 8.9, uh, it became stable. And now of course it's in Drupal 9 as well. And I've been using it in both Drupal 8.x 8, 8 and Drupal 9 as well. Uh, I have this little um, demo site that I'll show you that's in Drupal 9. So who is Layout Builder for? Well, it's for uh, site builders, content editors, uh, potentially for marketing folks, as well as for developers. So I, I think it appeals to a wide variety of folks. And uh, that, I think that's a good thing. It's just amazing that this is in Drupal core. Um, is it extendable? Is Layout Builder extendable? Why, yes, it is. Um, there's an ever-growing ecosystem of contrib modules. And you can also extend a layout. So you can define custom layouts in a module or your theme. Um, so right now there's about 30 plus modules uh, that extend the functionality of Layout Builder. And there's a link here. And there's a resources section at the end. And I have links in there and we'll share, we'll share this uh, presentation. So if you want to click on any of those. Um, so some of my favorites right now that we've been using uh, layout builder styles. That's that one that I mentioned where you can define pre, pre predefined sets of HTML classes for the use in either the section or the individual blocks. Um, the restrictions I mentioned, uh, layout builder modal. I showed you that demo, uh, or I showed you a screen capture of that. And I'll show it in my demo as well. Um, now, this is a new one I've, I've just been trying. It's called Layout Builder Component at Attributes. And that is like amazing. 
So what it is, is it's probably, I'd say it's maybe more f for a developer. Um, so when I'm theming, I use BEM style CSS. Uh, so BEM style CSS is block element modifier. Um, so, so this attributes is great if you just want to set your parent block BEM class at the very top of the block, because everything is pretty much blocks and layout builder. Um, so that comes in handy. It may not necessarily be something you want to predefine as a style with layout builder styles, but the component attribute is wonderful for, I believe, you know, personally, I think it's great for developers. Um, if you're using BEM or really anything else, you can set an ID, you can set a class, you can set some uh, other kinds of attributes. Um, and worth a look, uh, Layout Builder UX, I haven't tried it, but it looks interesting. It, it, it seeks to improve the UX of Layout Builder. Um, extra templates looks interesting. Again, I haven't used it, but these are, I was just cruising around on the ecosystem page. Um, layout options looks interesting and layout builder library. So that looks to be a way of easily switching layouts, uh, for site builders, um, or content editors. So, uh, theoretically you could define some, you know, you'd have some predefined layouts and I, I haven't used it. So, but it looks really interesting. Um, so building with layout builder, uh, so some key points are custom view modes on a per entity basis. So that I was talking about that and that, that really is powerful. Uh, layout builder plus view modes plus entities. Um, captured, so layout builder is captured by Drupal 8 and 9 config export and import. But I have an asterisk here because uh, keep in mind that when you do an override on an individual entity item, so for example, let's say you overrode a node with your own layout that would not be captured in config, just the, just what's set on the main parent, you know, content type, if you will, display UI. Uh, however, if you end up overriding on an individual node uh, for layout builder, theoretically, you could just revert back later on and there's, there's a revert button. So you can get back to, you know, what is defined in the, in the main, in the main entity. Uh, so it replaces an entity display with layout builder UI for any given view mode, keep that in mind. So you could have other view modes that just have standard fields, but you could have a, other view modes that have the layout builder UI set. Um, drag and drop, which is really nice, similar to, uh, to panels or, well, maybe more like paragraphs. Um, I've been using entity construction kit a lot uh, we're using it at Canopy for a new build with Layout Builder, but I'm also using it on my, uh, my demo site as well. Um, so I love Entity Construction Kit, and that seems to play well, really well with uh, Layout Builder. Um, and the option to preview in Layout Builder UI. And of course, custom layout templates uh, overridable. Um, so here's a few ideas for building. Um, so at the very ba basic one would be layout builder controlled at the entity type level. So that would mean you're not allowing overrides on a per entity item basis. Uh, now the ne next one would be layout builder controlled on a per entity item level. That would be where you have overrides and I'll show you that. Um, or you can offer a few types of layouts to choose from with a select list. Uh, so I've been using uh, this Drupal API function called hook entity uh, view mode alter. And so you can, you can get in there and define, you know, you, you can have a little select list that's a field and then you can, you can do that with hook entity view mode alter. You can say which view mode will be chosen based on the, uh, based on the select list item. Um, theming with layout builder. So basically the DOM hierarchy is the, the, the hierarchy is layout block field entity. So for example, it might be layout block field node. Um, and I'll show you a visual of that in just a moment. Um, layout builder styles allow for predefined HTML classes per section or block that 
that is a visual item for content editors or other folks. Uh, it also, when you use a layout builder style, it also gives you a template suggestion based on those classes. So I thought that was really interesting. Uh, view modes can be set per entity and leverage via template suggestions. So, so here's an example from my demo site. So up here you see we have our layout with this layout that I defined, uh, layout Tropica two call bricks. Then we have a block. Uh, so we have this, you know, person, this person uh, item here, and then we have the field for that block. And then um, we have the, you know, within that we have the node because I'm referencing uh, another content type within my layout builder uh, page. So uh, that's that. And what about paragraphs and panels and others? Um, so, you know, I, I don't know if layout builder necessarily is, it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one replacement for, for those other modules. Those other modules are great. Oh, I haven't used panels in Drupal 8 actually, so I can't speak to that. Um, in Drupal 8 thus far until layout builder came along, it was, it was pretty much paragraphs more or less. Um, so, I mean, you know, you have to choose the right tool for the job. So I, I think there's probably still a place for paragraphs. Uh, I'm using entity construction kit. So, you know, you just have to find out what's best for you. Um, but keep in mind, Layout Builder is a totally visual layout tool on, on the uh, Layout Builder UI page. So that's a big plus. I mean, paragraphs, yeah, you're dragging around and you can, you can have your module modular content like that, but it's definitely not a visual type thing as much as Layout Builder. So I'll do my live demo. Oh, and here's the resources. So I've just linked to some of the resources that I mentioned. Um, so I will, let's see, I'm going to close my demo and, um, okay. So here's, here's my demo site. Let me first show you what it looks like. So here's my landing page. So I was mentioning that uh, Layout Builder is, is great for landing pages. So I have a hero here. I have some text. I have a call to action. Um, then I have, this is interesting because what I've done is I placed these blocks in the Layout Builder layout. So it's not part of the node at all. So that's the beauty of Layout Builder. You can just insert things where you want and they don't necessarily need to be part of the actual content in the node itself. Um, then I have this team that I was mentioning um, where I showed you the uh, HTML hierarchy for that. Um, and we have a quote. So these are all, uh, I'll show you that on the edit page. So here's the edit page. Um, Actually, let me just back up for a minute. I want to show you how you enable Layout Builder. So here's the, this is the extend page in Drupal 9, Drupal 8 also. Um, so if I, if I type in Layout here, you'll see these two modules are in core, Layout Builder and Layout Discovery. Uh, layout Discovery is the, you know, that's the API, if you will, for Layout Builder. So so layout discovery doesn't do a ton on its own. So layout builder latches on to layout discovery. So really to get going and you only need to really enable these two modules and they're both in Drupal core. Um, so you can enable those. Uh, and you can see, I have a bunch of others here. Now this layout components, I haven't even tried that yet. And I did not mention it in my slides, but it's something that I'm gonna take a look at. It looks interesting. Um, okay, so we're back on our node. So you can see here, I have my hero. I have a little content. I have uh, these, these are entity references to the person content type. Right now I'm on, I'm on a landing page content type. So these refer to that. I have my call to action. I have a quote. And then you'll see here, I have settings. Now I've, I've created this view mode select list uh, that I was mentioning. So theoretically I could, 
I could choose the alternate layout. So, so the page looks all nice and styled. I've themed this. Um, but if I do this and I save, and this is where I cross my fingers. So you can see now it's totally unstyled because I've switched view modes, but I don't have, I don't have anything really defined for this view mode yet. So, but it just shows you how you can, you can switch layouts. Um, so I could just go back to none and save that. Um, yeah, and then I'm back to my design. And let me show you that on the back end. So, so here's that alternate layout. So here's the default view mode, uh, which comes you know, with every entity, most entity types. Um, so I have use layout builder. I have allow, you know, I have the overrides here. Um, and you can see, you know, the possible layouts that one can use. So if I go to alternate layout, um, it's just a bunch of fields like you're normally used to, uh, but I haven't, I haven't styled or themed for this view mode yet. Um, but it, it shows you, you know, you could really go to town adding more view modes. Um, and here is the layout builder interface. Um, so once when you're here on the display UI, you click manage layout, and then that goes to this page. And you can see here, we have our blocks, sections, um, and I'll show you that, uh, I'll show you that modal. So this is layout builder modal, which, which is a contrib module. And it's really nice because uh, normally all this stuff is over in the sidebar like this. So it gets a little crowded over there. So what's nice is when you do configure a block, uh, it gives you this nice modal. Uh, and you can see you have your view mode. Uh, you can either choose an entity ID or label for form matter. Most times rendered entity is, is used, but sometimes you do use label if you like. Um, and you know you can display the title if you want. Uh, then the other thing which I was telling you about is this manage attributes. So this is wonderful. So you so this might be good for developers where I say, you know, I want my parent uh, uh, BEM class here, and and then you know then I'm going to do other stuff below that. Uh, so that that's really nice. Um, and here's the layout builder styles user interface. So you can, you can define all these styles for either sections or components. And, and we saw that in our, um, so those classes show up here. So you can choose multiple classes, whatever you like. Uh, and that's, that's here. And there's a settings there's a settings page for layout builder styles. So you can, you have a few options there. Um, and here's the user interface for the component attribute settings. So you can see here, I've disallowed inline CSS styles, but I'm allowing some other things. Um, and I guess, well, I have to go to the thank you slide. Uh, so I just wanna thank everyone and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions if anybody has some. Thanks, Annie. I, I have a question, if it's OK. Yeah, go ahead, Mario. Um, so do you normally create layouts uh, like in a YAML format? Um, or how do you determine what layouts you're going to be using in your project? Uh, and how do you go about making those available? Yeah, so um, you, you get those basic layouts out of the box, like a two column, a one column, uh, three column. So you, you get those out of the box. So you could theoretically just use those, um, but you could also define your own. Uh, so you know, in your theme, you can you can define your own uh, layout. And there's a good guide on Drupal.org. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for, does, for, I'll add that to the resources. I don't know if I put that there. Um, so yeah, per project, you would define what layouts are going to be used ahead of time. And then those can be chosen by, you know, uh, by, by folks. 
Cool. Thanks. Sure. Anyone else? I guess I could ask another one if, uh, oh, if yeah, somebody sure. else yeah. is. So have, have you done any uh, re-engineering of your, let's say, a page or a component that used to use paragraphs and then now uses Layout Builder? How, how, and if so, how involved is that process? I would think it maybe depends on the complexity of the component, but on a typical component, like a hero or a card, um, how, how involved is that process? Um, you know, I haven't done that uh, necessarily, so I, I can't speak to that. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm just not sure about that. Uh, I, I could just chime in and say something about that, which is, um, you know, you, you can't really just place paragraphs in Layout Builder. There is actually a contributed module um, for paragraphs in Layout Builder, but I, I don't think I'd personally recommend that. Um, so to Mario's question, like, yeah, like if you already had a site and you'd already invested heavily in configuring all your paragraphs, um, switching over, like that would not be trivial. Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, I guess you could make custom blocks that reference the paragraphs, but I don't know if I would recommend that either. <laughs> so I think this no, is I, kind I of imagine a, it's going to be yeah, a improvement process. Yeah. Um, I, I was just thinking, um, let's say, uh, so we have a distribution, the, the call rain, and, and it has been built with paragraphs and it works great, but eventually we think we might need to move it to layout builder. And so just trying to get a sense for what that would look like. Um, but yeah, I can imagine moving an entire project from paragraphs to layout builder is, is not yeah. an easy task. Cause you you'd know. have all the config and then you'd have to migrate yeah. content. So yeah. So we, we kind of went about this at first cause we were, you know, you know, nervous about a new paradigm. So what we did the first time we used it is we just used it on just the homepage of a project. We felt like that <laughs> mitigated our risk. And so we stuck with paragraphs and our usual way of mm -hmm. building all the other content types and, and nodes on the site, but just the homepage. We thought, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that was That's a good, good way to ease into it, you know? Yeah, right. I'd like to add, definitely avoid using paragraphs inside Layout Builder if you can possibly avoid it. There, oh, good. There are demons in there. <laughs> Especially with if you, once you get into revisions, if you and yeah. forward forward revisions oh. and drafts, and, yeah. you know, because the entity reference revisions module is part of that picture, and you get a whole bunch of revisions and then permissions checking. It's it's a mess, so just avoid it if you can. Yeah, and to me, it's a layout builder uh, uses is best with a block system. Right. And paragraphs yeah. and blocks just don't play well together. Yeah. Paragraphs are blocks at the end of the day. Um, yeah, yeah. So you know the the thing about paragraphs is that you kind of use paragraphs in a layout builder way <laughs> in the fact that you can have paragraphs inside of paragraphs and you can like child them in like that. And that's where that's the, the ecos ecosystems are completely they're They're both great, but I wouldn't want to cross streams. Um, yeah. That would be a bad Egon. So yeah, I think paragraphs uh, with layout builder is just an extra layer of complexity that you don't really need uh, where you can pretty much do the same with blocks. Um, so yeah. Yeah. What one thing? Um, so we're using Entity Construction Kit, and that plays really well with Layout Builder. Just bringing in, you know, ECK entities, because um, those are full fledged, independent, custom entities, really. Um, but one of the one of the features that I know there's an issue open for with Layout Builder, I'd love to see, would be the ability to add like a field collect or not field collection. Oh my God, um, a fields group type wrapper. Yeah. Um, so for example, let's say you have a couple blocks and you want those to have be in a certain wrapper right. um, within a whole series of things. 
uh, I mean, theoretically, you could just have your own section, but I, I, sometimes I was thinking that would be nice, but it's just not a feature yet. But I, I think it's something that's going to be forthcoming. I mean, I, I think this thing is just going to take off when Drupal 9.1 uh, hits later in the year, maybe. So when you create a section in, in a page with Layout Builder, let's say um, a listing of news as an example. So that, that becomes a section. Is there a, a wrapper? Uh, if, I'm, if I plan on adding, let's say multiple news articles, like a list of news articles. So does that section uh, create its own identity uh, from a markup point of view? Yeah, it, it, you'll have a wrapper for sure. Um, it'll okay. be like a layout wrapper. Uh -huh. um, but then again, if, if it's like a list of views, sure, you'll get that markup from the view itself that'll have a wrapper. Um, but I was thinking of just some like random, you know, things that you pop in Layout Builder that you might want a custom wrapper for. But yeah, you'll definitely get a lot of stuff just out of the box. Can, can you create uh, template suggestions for uh, layout sections perhaps? Um, so like you will have, let's say a page template first and then um, create some kind of template suggestion for the, the different sections on a given page. Uh, would that be something that can be done? And then every time you wanna work with Layout Builder, you will have those sections already predefined? Well, yeah, so I, I, what I've found is that if when you go to use when you go to debug the layout theme hook, for example, you don't you don't get a ton of information in in that theme when you're debugging an X debug, you don't get a ton of information in there. So so what I've been doing is I've added like some layout builder styles uh, that can be added to sections. So for example, you might have a Ben modifier in mm -hmm. that in that section. Uh, so then you could use that modifier, uh, that Ben modifier to, you know, create some kind of variation in your CSS. As, as far as templates go, it really starts to get customized one level down uh, from the layout theme hook, which would be the block theme hook. But there too, you can add, there you can add, you can add um, your, your styles with layout builder mm -hmm. styles or the attributes module. And when you add a style, it creates a theme hook for that style. Mm. So that's actually pretty neat. Um, that, 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 and there was a bug with that, but I believe it was just fixed. So you get a, you get a template suggestion based on a style you've added to that block. Okay. So I think maybe that helps answer the question a little. Yeah, because I'm thinking, uh, yeah, Layout Builder certainly seems to be the, the thing that will give a little more control to content editors, content creators, right? Um, mm. And so, but there are times when, you know, there are organizations that, you know, they need to go through an approval process before they can let anybody change anything as far as structure of the a page or, uh, you know, sections of a page. So in many cases, uh, they may not be able to make those changes that they wish they could or, or that they have the ability to do because there's some kind of protocol policy in place for that. But, um, and so for that reason, I was thinking uh, in those cases, having predefined sections, uh, I would look at them as regions of a theme in a way where you can say, here are the different sections on this page that you can work with and you can move things around within this, each of these sections. Um, um. Yeah, I mean, I think that sounds like, you know, it would be custom defined section templates, mm -hmm. like layout templates, so to speak. Like that, yeah. that, that two column bricks I showed you, that, that I defined in code. Uh, well, basically I took code from core. And yeah. I, there's a module on core, I think it's the actual layout module, the API 
that has those as examples, but they don't show up in Layout Builder. So you can just grab those and, and start, you know, you can start creating your own custom templates that are predefined. So then you say, okay, this is what, this is what content editors can choose from. Mm -hmm. David raised his hand, so I think he should get to go. Oh, okay. Go ahead, David. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, for, for your talk. Uh, uh, in, in your example, you, sh you show us uh, the, all the content in fields. What do you think about the move all the content to blocks and just uh, move the, the, the blocks into the, the, the layout for each node, for example? Oh, it's totally. Great. Yeah. You, oh, for sure. Yeah. In fact, um, we just created a new node type called Freeform. Uh, in a project we're working on with uh, Ann Bonham and, and myself um, at Canopy. And the, the, the node itself doesn't have any fields, the, no, the content type. There are no, def well, there's one defined, there's two defined fields. That's for social image and social teaser, but they're not displayed. So essentially it's a blank empty content type. And then the entire, con the entire and we've said overrides. So then in the entire, for any individual node in that content type, it's all gonna be custom blocks in Layout Builder. Um, so, and it's really, it's really powerful because of that. So totally, yeah, for sure, good question. Uh, and and uh, our recommendation, uh, one module or modules for, uh, for translate, for translations in, in lay Layout Builder, because I have an, some issues translating content. Uh, and do you know, I don't know. And do you know anything about that? I do not. That's something I need to research. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not sure about that. I, I saw some, some modules, the layouts, translation, synchronization or async or something like that. I don't remember exactly the, the name of the modules, but they have some, some problems. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I think the, we need to, uh, get more work for the, for the Drupal core because it's not easy to translate the, the blocks. Yeah, I, I would wager there's a bunch, there's probably one or more issues open on that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, pro you know, I, without looking, I don't know, but I'm guessing that's going to be something that's going to be addressed for sure. And there's also some issues open about accessibility as well. Uh, so I, I wouldn't be surprised you know, upcoming that you'll see some movement on those things. And to me, that's, that's also the difference as to why I'm hesitant to not, the accessibility reasons, because you, you, you can have someone dragging an H1 all over the place. You can have somebody adding things out of the, the tree weird, and it's hard to get semantic HTML in that case when it's so fluid. You know, the great thing of having defined fields is that you know, it restricts the, the, the how uh, the, the, the build of the page is, so. Yeah, for sure. I mean, as you can see, there's a million different ways you could use this thing. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting in that regard. It's, it's funny that you, you, you did the Freudian slip of calling them field collection for paragraphs oh. because <laughs> the, the first time I was introduced <laughs> to field collections, I actually said to the maintainer, so it's, or first time I saw paragraphs, I was like, so it's field collections. And I got laid into by the guy. Like, no, it's not because of catching it. I was just like, oh man, cool, sorry. Uh. There's actually still an outstanding bug with it as well if you use quick edit. Um, second, you put landing, uh, you put uh, layout builder in, your quick edit will break and it will spit all sorts of things into Java console. Oof. So quick edit doesn't work with, with layout builder right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. I haven't tried it, but. Yeah. But um, also you, you want to do the layout at that point, not the no wait. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> so, so your users can't quick edit anything with Layout Builder right now. Um, they are working on it. But okay, it's one yeah. of those 2,000 replies sort of threads on Dribble.org. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff open, a lot of issues. Um, you know, I, I think maybe when's Drupal, when's Drupal 9.1 supposed to come out, like in December or something? 
Uh, well, anyway, whenever it comes out, I, I'll bet <laughs> you there'll be a lot of... the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you there'll be a lot of improvements, you know, up between now and then. So do you think this will completely replace paragraphs eventually? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, in a way, like paragraphs replace field collections from Drupal 7 to 8. And, and so I could picture this new paradigm where, you know, people start using Layout Builder a lot and don't use paragraphs as much. Um, yeah, I, I could picture that happening. Paragraphs can get out of hand with revisions and highly nested things and really slow your site down. Uh, yeah. uh, Hawkeye does a talk on it. Hawkeye Tenderwolf does a, from Lullabot. He's trying to get rid of paragraphs and go into basically something that was in Drupal 5. I forget what it's called now. Um, but basically, you don't need revisions for that kind of stuff. And it's like get rid of revisions for all of it and everything becomes easier. Um, I'll, find the, I'll find his talk and I'll post it in chat. But that's worth looking at oh, yeah. for paragraphs. Yeah, that's, that sounds good. Um, yeah, I'd be definitely interested in taking a look at that. Yeah, Drupal Daniel's 5. One question. Or, or wondering if you could show us some of the content model behind some of what you've been doing, like with ECK. Like, how do you get from layout builder to something that you've done in ECK and have it show up? Oh, sure. Yeah. I'll I'll share my screen again. Okay, so, all right. So I'm gonna go here to my ECK entity types. Um, and so you can see here, I have a call to action, the hero and quote. So I'm gonna look at my bundle list for ECK and I'll manage the fields. Um, and so I have a hero image, a link and some text. So, so this is the ECK entity, uh, uh, you know, defined in my bundle. So now if I go to my display and I'll manage my display. Oh, actually, let me take a step back. So I'll go to, um, so I'll go here. And so here's the hero. This is the ECK hero that I just showed you in the ECK area. And so we have, you know, a title, um, some text uh, and, you know, the, the call to action link and here's an image. So this is on the landing page content type. And, and then when I come here, so I've placed, so basically what I've done is I've configured this. Um, well, actually, let me back up. So I can add a block. So uh, I'll, I'll remove this, I'll remove. And then what I'll do is I'll add, um, I'll add a new block. So when I come here, so, so it really is just a field in, in, in this sense, because it's a content field that's, that's within the landing page content type. So if I click here, then I'm going to do, you know, the rendered entity, uh, the view mode, if there is one, and that would be defined back over in ECK. And um, I'm going to do label hidden. So really, this is, this is how you would get that in Layout Builder. Um, does that help, David? Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can say it, say it back. <laughs> Okay. So, so you have you have the ECK entity type bundle type. Then, in your content type, you have a normal entity reference field that references one of those ECK entities. Oh yes, and let me interrupt you there because what I'm okay. doing here is I'm using an inline entity form. So, in other words, it is an entity reference, but it's an inline entity form. So you don't need to go anywhere else to create content. You just do it in place here. Okay, got it. And then in Layout Builder, you're, you're just selecting this field on the content type to, to have display. Exactly, yes. Got it, neat. Yeah, and, and in the field definition, if I go, um, 
if I go, uh, let's see. Well, let's just go content types, landing page, manage fields. So when I go over to hero, so it's an entity reference and then I click here. Oh, and by the way, this is the new Claro theme that's experimental in Drupal 8 and 9. Um, so you can he see here my, my, uh, my bundles that are available within Hero. So what I've done is I've, I've said, uh, I, I want to reference the ECK Hero, and then I'm going to choose that bundle. So you can have one or more bundles within an ECK entity type, and then you would choose what is in there. Nice. That's really cool. Thanks. Uh, anybody else? Oh, look at Ann's dog. Oh. Oh. I think she has a layout builder question. What do you want to ask, Bob? Go ahead. <laughs> Talk to you. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's really great, Danny. It's really, really good presentation. Oh, thanks, thanks. <laughs> I, I love Ann's dogs, uh, Bruiser and Ferdy. Um, I love seeing them on Zoom sometimes. Uh, Ann Stefanik's dogs as well. Ann puts out these like daily little videos for us and her dogs will be in the videos just like looking at her so lovingly it's like i wish i could get someone to look at me like that you know <laughs> anybody else have any questions for danny i thought those were great questions i'm glad that we captured those yeah. in the recording excellent questions from everyone yeah thank you and I'm going to stop the recording with